imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence, or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine I can only imagine When that day comes And I find myself Standing in the sun I can only imagine When all I will do Is forever Forever worship you I can only imagine, yeah. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall?
Good morning, everyone, and welcome this morning to the celebration of life for Benny Boone. Let me share a few remarks about Benny here. Benny T. Boone, 82, of Auburndale, passed away Wednesday, September 23rd at Wedwood Healthcare in Lakeland. A native of Talladega, Alabama, moved to Haines City in 1982 from the Atlanta area. Benny was the co-operator of the Heart of Florida Equipment Store in Haines City and a member of Village Church of God in Winter Haven, loving husband, father, and grandfather. He was preceded in death by his stepson, Kevin Polston, and survived by his wife, Victoria Louise Boone, daughter, Susie Weathers, Joby Lee, Teresa Needham, Gayla Faulkner, and stepdaughter, Pam Card, and brother, Daniel Boone, daughter-in-law, Kathy Polston, and numerous grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Having uh, been Benny's pastor for nearly eight years, um, you know, when you come into someone's life later, you don't always know everything about them, and it's been a delight to learn a little bit about Benny, especially in the last few days. Like every granddad, he has many names. Of course, Benny Daddy, Papa Benny, Papa Boone, and probably more that not, not listed here. I was surprised that, to learn that Benny loved to dance when he was younger. See, there's something you don't know about somebody just by looking at them. He loved, obviously, to collect the old model cars and, and attend the classic car shows. It seems like Benny was always busy. One of the things that I don't understand about Benny is why Benny wasn't a much bigger and way a lot more... Uh, bigger man than what he was because at church I've learned that anytime I had a piece of cake and it was really good when I asked somebody who made this it was always Miss Louise and so uh, I don't know how Benny wasn't bigger than what he is he loved to watch the Tampa Bay Rays and uh, I'm sure he would not like to come back for this but he would be delighted I'm sure to know that the Rays are in the playoffs but the one thing about Benny that stands out is that Benny loved the Lord, loved to pray. He loved, he loved to worship. And uh, we're here to celebrate his life this morning. Let me read scripture that I find is always good to read at a time like this. Perhaps David's greatest writings, the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This morning we're gonna we're gonna share a few songs, some remarks, talk about heaven, and celebrate the life of Benny Boone. Let's pray. Father, we love you today. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Lord, even through the maybe the strangest time in history, we thank you, Lord, that your grace still works, that you still love us. Lord, we've gathered in this room today to celebrate the life of a good man. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you will just speak and minister to the family and friends that have gathered here, and may Christ be praised in all that we do. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. We're going to listen to a great song.
just how you made it through. brother said we're here to celebrate today the life of Benny because to us believers there is no such thing as death death has passed away you know what I mean it's, it's only life Jesus said I am the way the truth and the life and I debated on if I was going to get up here and say anything today but the more I started thinking about it the more I thought you know how an in, big of injustice it would be for me not to because in the beginning, when me and my wife decided we were going to make a life together, me and Benny didn't always see eye to eye. Let's just say back then I wasn't the most anointed guy. And, but we got through it. And I remember how proud he was the day that he found out that we were ordained. It just tickled him pink. I remember when I would go to church with him. He would introduce me to people at church, and he'd say, this is my daughter, and this is my son-in-law, and he's a preacher. And it was just, it was just, it made me proud that he was that proud of me. And it just blows my mind how anointed the man was. When I would go see him, I don't know, before all this COVID stuff come around, I would sit down with him and I would talk to him, and he would always ask me. He may not could hold a, a conversation with you, but he would always ask me because he knew I worked out of town all the time. And he would say, well, where are you going this week? And I would tell him. And then at the end of all of that, I would say, all right, Benny, let's pray. Thinking I'm going to pray for him. And let me tell you something. He would catch out praying. God would move on him, and he would go word for word just as hard as you could go. And I'm going, she cut up my son, died up, I kick it. The Holy Ghost is just moving on me when he's moving on him. And I just think that's the most amazing thing for a person to have is the anointing, the presence of God on their life. And Benny had it. You know, my wife asked me the other day, we were sitting in the car, I think it was Saturday, she said, have I lost anything? Me being the guy I am, I thought it was a trick question, so I thought for a minute, and I said, no, baby, I don't think you've lost anything. Why? She says, because when everybody condoles us or consoles, she says, they always say we're sorry for your loss. And I said, no, baby, you've not lost nothing because when something is lost, you don't know where it's at. We know where Benny's at right now because the Bible says to be absent from the body is what? to be present with the Lord. I mean right now, present with the Lord. Jesus said, I'm a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He said, I'm as close as the very breath you breathe. So you check this out. If Jesus is as close as the very breath you breathe, Benny must. If the Bible's telling the truth, Benny must be just that close. Benny's not gone anywhere. All he's done is stepped over into that other realm into that cloud of witnesses, into that glorified body. You know, Paul said, Beloved, it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know when he shall appear we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Let me tell you something. Wednesday night, the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to Benny, and Benny saw him for who he was. And then Benny stepped back, and Benny saw Benny for who he was because he was just like him. He's not in prison anymore. He's not in pain anymore. 
He's not in that old wore out body that's going, this is nothing and this is just but a shell. The real Benny Boone is here with us right now. He's in this presence. He's in the presence. Him, all the angels, all the people in the cloud of witness, all the saints that went on before us, he's right there with them. He's shouting, glorified. He's probably right now, go ahead, Chris, you tell him, you tell him, you tell him. I believe that with everything in me. And it, I just, I, I got so much to say, but I just don't want to go too far, you know what I mean? I just, I just want to let y'all know that I just had to say something just because I love the man. And I know the man loved me. So, Father, I praise you. Can I pray with you also before I get down from here? Lord Jesus, we thank you right now, sir. We thank you for the time on this earth that we had with him. Father, we thank you for all the knowledge that we've received from him, Father. We thank you that all the, the things that he's taught us in the Bible and the things that he's taught us how to be Christ-like, to be like you, Lord. We thank you for all the love that he's given us through the years and all the understanding, even when a lot of people wouldn't understand. And Lord, I just thank you right now, sir, and I praise you and I honor you in your fabulous name, in the name of Jesus. Amen.
And amen to that. It is our great promise. I have been in this room many times in the past nearly eight years and presided over many services like this. I never, ever take this assignment for granted. And I stand here today to just share a little bit about Benny and a little bit about the life of the believer. When I come to a point like this, because all of us in this room have experienced this day where we, on this side of eternity, say goodbye to someone, and it is, it is for us believers a so long, we'll see you soon. I, I think about home. I think it's the right thing to do. I think it's the great promise for us to know that we have eternal life promised to us and where Benny is and where we will be. And I'm always drawn back to these same verses in John chapter 14, beginning at verse number 1. Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And it is the great hope for us that he will come again, and we will rise. So here's what I want to do for just a few minutes. I want to just talk about my father's house, our father's house. Crisis has been described as a crossroads. The word actually means a cross point. And what I've learned through crisis, and you have as well, and especially most of us in this room over the last nine months, crisis always changes you. It always leaves you differently. And in many cases, it'll leave you better or it'll leave you bitter. And when we come to a moment like this, we can't deny the fact that we it's a crisis. Death is a crisis. It is a change for us. We, uh, a life will be missing from our lives. And death is the great crisis. It changes us. In John chapters 13 through 17, and I'm not going to preach long to you this morning, just I promise you that, but in John 13 through 17, we get a very unique viewpoint of Jesus talking to the disciples, and this will be the last real conversation he will have with them. So he's gathered them in a place, and it will, these are like his final words. And so it's, it's important, I think, that we, we read these chapters that we realize, okay, this is an intimate moment. No words of Jesus were ever wasted. He was, he'd never wasted words. And so when he says what he says, we ought to listen. And he says to these guys, look, don't, don't be troubled. I'm going to prepare a place for you. I've got this. I'm going to take care of this. If it were not so, I would tell you different. And he says, in my father's house are many mansions. The word there actually means rooms. It's a big house. Years ago, I just shared this story with someone a few days ago. Years ago, when my wife Amy and I were dating, I wanted to take her to visit my grandparents. She'd never met my grandparents. And so uh, they lived down in southwestern Virginia. And my mother and dad happened to be visiting there with my grandparents. And so I thought, I'm going to take my girlfriend down and introduce her to my grandparents. I pulled up in front of my grandparents' house, and it was gone. And I, I looked at Amy, and I'm, I, I don't understand what's happened here. My, this is my grandparents live here. And the house is gone. Now, this is way before cell phones. We could have solved the mystery with a text message then. Uh, I had to find a pay phone. I called the number that I knew would be my grandfather's number, and my mother answered the phone. I said, Mom, I'm, I'm, where, I'm, I'm at Grandpa's house. Where's the house? Oh, honey, we forgot to tell you that he sold that house and moved. Now, that's an evil trick to play on your grandson. You, you know, you pull up in front of the house and it's gone. I want to tell you something. No such thing is going to happen to any of us in this room who call Jesus Christ Lord. There is a home. Benny's in it. We plan to go, and that is the great promise for all of us in this room today. Here's what I want to tell you about that home. First of all, it is a place of peace. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. The most often given command in Scripture is the command to fear not. It's given over and over and over in Scripture. And Jesus says, you know, listen, I, we're talking about the, the peace speaker. We're talking about the one who said to the winds and the waves, peace, be still. We're talking about the one who's called the prince of peace. This is what Jesus said in John 14, 27. 
Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. One of my favorite stories about peace is the story of an art professor who asked his students, I would like for you to paint a picture of peace. And so this was the assignment. And so these young artists took their easels and their canvases and their paintbrushes and they begin to paint their pictures. They, they came for the assignments to be turned in. As you can imagine, many pictures were of mountains or seascapes or fields of grain, things that looked peaceful except for one student. One student, the, the colors were dark. It was raining in the picture and you could, you could obviously tell it was a storm. The art professor thinking that maybe the student misunderstood the assignment and said, um, maybe you didn't understand, I wanted you to paint peace. And the st young student said, I did paint peace. You just have to look close. And there the artist explained to the art professor, if you look close in this picture, you'll see here I've painted a little bird in the cleft of the rock. The storm's raging, but here is real peace. Even right now during this crazy pandemic that we're going through, for the believer, we find a place of peace that, that we, we would not otherwise find. And I want to tell you that where Benny is, he's found his promise, and it is a place of absolute peace. Here's the second thing about this home. It's a place of plenty. I don't think any of us in this room, if we're honest, have ever really known what it's like to be in need of nothing. Maybe I should say maybe better in want of nothing. Sometimes there are things we see, oh, I'd like to have that. Or that would make my life better if I had a little bit more money, if I had a little bit bigger house. Jesus said, in my Father's house are many mansions. It is a big house. There is no lack of anything. Amy and I raised three sons. They are all men now, married, have families of their own. But when they were home, those three boys Especially when they got around 13, 14, 15, they would eat you out of house and home. We, it was an endless supply of keeping food in the house for these boys to make sure, and, and all the parents of boys said, amen. You understand, you know, they eat lots of food. A place where there is no lack of anything. There's really no real point of reference for it here on this planet. A place where there's, this is the way it's described in scripture. Paul describes it, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. And I love this idea that even though in this life we sorrow, we, do, we, we know that we do. We know we're human. You cut us, we bleed. We, we will get hurt. This is what the Bible says in Revelation 21, 4. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Miss Louise, listen to this. Every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, no sorrow, no crying. There shall be no more pain. For the former things have passed away. This is the reoccurring theme in the Bible that God loves us and he cares for us so much that he sent his son Jesus Christ to die for us. Benny made that decision to follow Jesus, to make Jesus Christ the Lord of his life. And so he is in this great place of plenty today, but here's the last one. It's a place of promise. Jesus said, and this is the good news, Jesus said that where I am, there you may be also. It is our promise. When I was a boy, my, my mom and dad were raised in a little coal mining village right on the West Virginia, Virginia line, deep in the mountains. Um, and when I was a boy, I remember going back with my dad and mom and my brother and sister. I must have been, I don't know, six or seven years old, and my dad had gone back to visit his old home place. Setting on the side of a hill in a little coal mining village was a house that now was kind of falling apart, dilapidated. There, I remember there being an old, a few old pieces of furniture in there. I can remember my dad milling around in that place. And as we were leaving, he's a, you know, he was young. We were young. And we were leaving this house. And I remember my mom saying something to my dad about home. And I remember him saying something like, no, nah, this is not home anymore. This, for us, 
We, this is a temporary assignment here. We're only passing through here. It's easy to get attached. But the truth is, this is really not home. We're just, we're just passing through. Benny has stepped in to what is now eternity and stepped into his real home. Miss Louise, you got to share life with him. You got to see all of his hobbies. You got to hear him pray. I asked somebody the other day, I was having lunch with somebody, and I said, tell me a little bit about Benny Boone. They knew him. And the first thing that they said, Benny loved to pray. And boy, could he pray. It's already been referenced here this morning. All of those prayers now have come to fruition for Benny Boone because he is in this place of promise. We trade this earthly house for an eternal one. The great challenge for us is that we're left on this side of eternity. We deal with the hurt. We deal with the loss. Over the last few weeks, I have, I've had the honor and the privilege to preside over the service for now three great godly men. And, and every time I, I come to the same place, this, listen, Death is no respecter of persons unless the Lord comes, and I believe he could come at any moment, and I pray that he does, but unless he comes, everyone in this room is going to face this day where we will cross from this life into the real one, and we will have to make a decision now. Thank God that Benny made that decision. The Apostle Paul said it this way, For me to live is Christ, to die is gain. For me, the New Living Translation says, living means living for Christ, dying is even better. I don't know what you do to a person that has really that in their heart. How can you hurt a person like that? How, how can a person like that lose when, when Paul says, if I live this life, I'm going to live it to its fullest, but if I die, I know where I'm going. Thank God that Benny had made the decision, and we know where Benny Boone is and we know what, what our promise is. We can go into the same home that Benny has inherited. You know, death touches every one of us. On December 17, 1993, uh, Amy and I said goodbye to her only brother. Amy has three sisters, but there was one boy in the family. And Matt was young, 33 years old a youth pastor full of life, maybe, maybe the funniest person I've ever met in my life, always spread joy to everybody, but cancer had robbed him of his weight and all of his hair, and he lay in a hospital room in Atlanta, Georgia. It was near, um, near Thanksgiving. We had gone to see him, and uh, I remember in the conversations with Matt, him constantly talking about home. I, I want to go home. To go home. He was, he was not delirious. He was of, still of sound mind. And finally, we realized he was not talking about going back to his home in Atlanta. He was talking about going home. He was tired and he just, I want to go home. And, and I remember when we finally got it, yes, he, he wants to go home, his real home. And so when we say goodbye to a believer on this side of eternity, they've just simply gone home. It's like they've stepped into the next room. They've just stepped into the next room. And our promise is, if we follow Jesus and we serve him, we can be there too. Revelation 22, 1, And he showed me a pure river of water, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and from the Lamb. And th listen to the description of this home. The 12 gates were 12 pearls. Each individual gate was one pearl. That was a, that is some kind of oyster. I'm going to just tell you that right now. <laughs> one, one pearl. And the streets of the city were pure gold like transparent glass, but I saw no temple in it. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city had no need of the sun or the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it, and the Lamb is its light. I, I have to tell you, Having been raised in church and having been around places like this, and I thank God for places like this, funeral homes and places where we say goodbye to someone, 
I don't step into one ever, I don't think, and I just, I, my mind goes back to chi my childhood because, you know, when you're young and you go into a place like this, it can be a little intimidating because death is so strange. You, you haven't learned that it's a real, it's a part of life. And it can be a little, it can be a little scary. It can be a little intimidating. It can cause a little bit of fear. But as I've grown older and gained a few more pounds and a lot more gray hairs, I've learned that there's really nothing to fear about any of it. There's really nothing to fear about any of it for the believer. We just simply say goodbye for a little while. My dad, as I try to close everything here for us, my dad loved music. I grew up in a singing family. My wife grew up in a singing family. Both of our dads were old quartet guys, you know, and we grew up around music, and we grew up singing out of the old redback hymnal. Some of you in the room know what that is, and uh, those old songs, great old songs, and one of my dad's favorite writers, hymn writers, was an African-American pastor named Cleavon Derricks. Cleavon Derricks was born in 1909 in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and was a young man during the Great Depression, and he wrote some great songs, Just a Little Talk with Jesus. He wrote, When God Dipped His Love in My Heart. He wrote, When He Blessed My Soul. And my father loved his songs. And one of the things about Cleavon Derricks, he usually had a bass line in the song. My dad loved bass singers, and so he just loved his songs. But one of my dad's favorite songs is one that I almost always quote in a service like this. The song was written in 1934. It's page number 30, by the way, in the Redback Hymnal. It's, we soon, we'll soon be done with troubles and trials. Listen to, I love this. Listen to the words of this. Some of these days I'm going home. Where no sorrow ever comes, we'll soon be done with troubles and trials. Let me just pause here for a minute and just say to you, Miss Louise, no more trouble, no more trial. No more pain. Safe from heartaches, pain, and care, we shall all his glory share. And this is the line that I love. I'm going to sit down beside my Jesus. I'm going to sit down and rest a little while. And the chorus says, we'll soon be done with troubles and trials. In that home on the other side, I'm going to shake glad hands with the elders Please permit me to just share a moment, but I'm sure that Benny and Kevin have found each other by now and are rejoicing about this life and the life that they share now. I'm going to shake glad hands with the elders. I'm going to tell my kindred good morning. And I just picture it. I just picture a man like Benny who's lived his life, lived a long time on this planet, tired, body wore out. I'm going to sit down beside my Jesus. I'm going to sit down and rest a little while. So, Miss Louise and family and friends, my best word to you today is take heart in the promise of the Father. Ben, he's, on, he's home. He's home. No more pain. No more struggle. And I think today is a good day for everybody in the room to be reminded of the promise of God and to be reminded of what it means to walk this life, to serve God, you know, this, this life is short. As a young man, I hear people, would hear people say that, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. But as I've gotten older, I realize life has gone by really fast. There's only one thing that really matters in this life, and that is Jesus Christ. Make him Lord of your life. We thank God for Benny. It was a privilege to know him. But we know that Benny has gone home, and it is the great promise for all of us in this room. Let me pray. Father, we love you today. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your grace. Lord, I pray for Miss Louise. I pray for every family member and friend here today. Lord, may we, may we walk this same path that Benny chose to walk. May it be an example to every one of us in this room to love God, love people, and Lord, and just know that the promise of eternal life is for every one of us. Lord, we look for your appearing. We, we look for you to come again and receive us to yourself, even as Scripture teaches us. And Lord, should you come again, take us home, and Lord, should we leave this life before you do, I pray, Father, that we'll be ready to meet you, that we too can go home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.